let us uh, continue our discussion on clock design. So, if you recall in our last lecture, we talked about uh, some of uh, the parameters like uh, skew, jitter, setup time and hold time and how they play a role in deciding the maximum clock cycle time during a so called pipeline kind of execution, where there are storage stages with some logic circuitry in between. Okay. So, in this lecture we start today by trying to talk about the various factors that can affect the clock skew. So, I shall be trying to explain these points one by one. So, here as you can see I have used a term called leaf node. So, let me just explain it once more. So, I have a chip, I have an external clock signal that is coming from outside and there are several terminal points where I have to feed my clock signal. Okay. Now, these are called my leaf nodes or leaf points of my clock network. So, in my clock network I have to connect the signal to each of these terminal points. Okay. I have to connect this to each of these points and these are called leaf network, leaf nodes or leaf points. So, the first factor that affects the skew is the electrical symmetry of the network. What does the electrical symmetry means? Electrical symmetry means that well I am generating the clock from somewhere, I am sending it or distributing it to several leaf or terminal points. Now, electrical symmetry means what will be the electrical delay of each of these paths? They will depend on number of factors because you know for any transmission line there will be resistive and capacitive effects along the path and means also inductive effects. So, so, if you lay out these wires in such a way that the delay on each of these wires will be approximately equal to the extent possible, then you can achieve some kind of a symmetry. This is what is meant by electrical symmetry of the network. Okay. So, the first point here electrical symmetry of the network. So, so in this diagram, so so, whatever I have shown here, if delta 1 is the delay of this path, delta 2 is the delay of this path and delta n the delay of this path, what I want is that these delays should all be approximately equal. Okay. This is a requirement that you have to satisfy and these delays are in terms of electrical delay. So, where we are incorporating the resistive and capacitive effects. Okay. The next point is the process variation of the clock buffers and interconnects. Well, clock buffer is one thing that we shall again be coming back again and discuss in more detail. It means you see this clock signal is one kind of a signal where there can be thousands of leaf nodes, there can be thousands of flip flops or even more. So, I mean you cannot expect a single line to be connected directly to 1000 other points. So, you need some kind of a buffer, either a current buffer which can be fed to a number of different clock points or you can have a some kind of a network of buffers. Like this. So, from here you can possibly feed. So, there will be the interconnection lengths and of course, the capacitive resistive effects and also the delays of these buffers, both of these will be important here. Okay. So, the process variation means when these are fabricated, there will be some variation from one buffer to the other. So, no two buffers can be exactly identical in terms of the delays. So, because of that skews might be introduced. There is another property in VLSI circuits is that uh, the delay of a circuit, delay of a 
some kind of a sub circuits it depends on the power supply. So, because of some again physical effects inside the chip parasitic effects if there is a variation in the power supply there will also be a plus minus variation in the delay of the resulting circuit that can again introduce a skew. So, the third point is the power supply variation of the clock buffer then capacitive coupling well all the paths that are leading to the clock leaf nodes they may not be electrical identical for some of them the capacitive coupling effect with other lines are already running there can be more as compared to the other lines. So, some of the lines might get delayed by a greater amount than the other. So, this is one issue that needs to be addressed and of course, temperature variation across the die. Well, if you do not design your chip in a proper way what might happen is that some part of your silicon might get heated more than the other part. Now, you know that the physical parameters of this MOS devices they vary quite significantly with changes in temperature. So, if one part of a chip is hotter than the other part, so may be the delay of one part will be different from the delay of the other part. So, skews might get introduced because of this as well. Okay. So, there are many such factors for which skews might be generated and such variation effects are very difficult to control and some of them are almost impossible to control. This is I wanted to talk about. Well, some of the terminologies already we introduced uh, these earlier in the last lecture, but let me reintroduce them again. So, we sometimes talk about the clock width. Clock width is not equal to the clock period. Clock width means for how long time the clock remains high, because clock blows high again goes low. Clock width is the time period for which the clock remains high. So, some of the flip flops may be having a minimum time requirement for this. Minimum time duration for which the clock signal needs to be high in order that the flip flop works properly. Like you see, I mean you may be having a flip flop which is H triggered means that you expect whenever there is a 0 to 1 low to high uh, means H coming on the clock sig clock input it will trigger and store the input value. But what if the pulse that is applied to clock is so narrow that the flip flop is not able to register for example, a 1 picosecond width pulse that is usually not sufficient for the flip flop to trigger that pulse must be of a minimum width only then the flip flop will be able to detect the edge and work in a proper way that is the clock width constraint. Okay. Then comes uh, the setup time this is typically denoted by either T setup or T S U both are same. Setup time I repeat so there is no harm in repeating this is the amount of time the input to a flip flop must be stable before the clock edge appears. So, for a positive edge triggered it is a high edge for a negative edge triggered it is a low edge. So, before the edge comes what is the minimum amount of time I must hold my data to the input that is the hold time that is the uh, so called setup time. Setup time is a time that must be given for me to apply the input data before the clock edge comes okay. this is the setup time. Similarly, comes the hold time which is denoted by T hold or T h. T hold you recall this comes into play after the clock edge comes. So, this is the amount of time the input to the flip flop must be stable after the clock transition high or low depending on the edge. Okay. So, so when there is a clock edge I must have a minimum time before the edge comes I must keep my data stable and also after the edge comes I must keep my data stable. It is not that whenever the edge comes I know that the thing has happened and I am done I remove my data immediately not that you can emit you can remove the data only after the whole time and before the clock edge comes you must apply the data a little before. So, 
to summarize say for example, for leading edge flip flop my edge is coming here this is my time. So, my input data must be ready starting from here and must be continue to be applied till here. This is my setup time, this is my hold time, okay. this you should remember. Okay. And the last thing are the these are the propagation delays. Propagation delay means starting from the clock edge, how much time is required for the output to change. So, output means not the output of the flip flop, flip flop plus the logic, the total delay like the propagation delay. Starting from the clock edge, what is the maximum propagation delay after which my output will become available. Okay. So, it can be either low to high or high to low. So, depending on the clock edge you are working, it can be T p low to high or T p high to low, this is the propagation delay. So, setup hold as I have said. So, here I am showing it diagrammatically, you can see it very clearly. So, so I have a flip flop, the input is coming, this is my input. Okay, actually here I am showing one flip flop, but in a I means in a pipeline there will be a set of flip flops, a register. That is why I am showing it in a vector notation, the input data are coming. This notation means the data is changing. So, here my new data is coming. So, after my new data has come to the input, I must keep it stable for a minimum amount of time t setup only after which my clock edge can come. And after my clock edge can come, I must continue to keep my data stable for another time t hold. So, my data must be kept stable a minimum time before the clock and also a minimum time after the clock. Okay. This is the requirement of setup and hold time. So, you can say that I must have to keep my data stable for a time which must be greater than t setup plus t hold with these timing constraints. Okay. Constraint pin means such timing constraint must have to be satisfied for the input data in. right? So, let us look at a scenario like this, this shows uh, the different timing that I have just introduced a deep flip flop. So, the clock signal is coming as I said the width of the clock pulse that is your T w and before the clock comes the D input must be applied minimum of T setup time before and after the clock comes it must continue to be there minimum of t hold time okay t sub set up and hold and this t propagation h l means after the clock edge comes after how much time this q output is available so after the d is applied the clock goes there will be some t p h l maybe here the q output is available the q changes here so this hold time is t p h l Okay. So, these are the times that we have discussed setup time, hold time, clock width and propagation delay high to low or low to high whatever depending on the polarity of the clock. Now, when you cascade flip flops there are a lot of timing issues that we shall see now one by one. So, if a flip flop propagation delay exceeds the hold time there can be a problem, second stage can commit its input before the output of the first flip flop changes. See hold time is what you just uh, recall once more, hold time is the minimum time the data must be kept stable after the clock edge comes. right? So, the clock is being fed to both the flip flops. So, after the clock comes, so my input has to be kept stable 
for minimum that much time, you think of the second one. So, your propagation delay of the flip flop is something. So, after the clock comes after some delay this q 0 will become stable and if that delay exceeds the whole time that means, your second flip flop will be not be getting that minimum time for which it can respond correctly. Okay. So, there can be error in the timing fine. Okay. Now, this diagram shows the correct scenario. So, what should be? You see that same two flip flops one feeding the other. So, the clock is shown in the last this is the clocking. So, here I am show this is the input data, input data is applied a minimum of t setup time before the clock edge and after the clock edge comes a minimum of t hold time this input should be stable minimum of that much yes it is so it is in fact stable for much more no problem there, but minimum it should be this much and let us say there is some circuitry in between or the propagation delay of this flip flop and this line this is T p L h suppose this is T p L h. So, your input must be stable for this much time and only after this T p L h q 0 will change state right and again in the next clock when q 1 becomes q 0 becomes 1 in the next clock q 1 will become 1 again after that delay T p H L T setup and T p H L. Okay. So, so, in this way the flip flops will go on working right. This is the correct scenario of operation. Now, let us see that when there is clock skew between two successive stages what are the uh, means issues or problems that might take place. Let us see it one by one with some examples. Here uh, we have deliberately introduced an inverter here see there are two d flip flops the clock inputs are C 1 and C 2, C 1 is a positive edge triggered, C 2 is a negative edge triggered. So, because of the inverter the same clock will be triggering both of them, but this inverter we have introduced just to show that C 2 will be delayed a little bit clock C 2 is skewed after C 1 and suppose here we have a combination circuit a simple OR gate let us say. Let us see what happens here. This is a scenario where uh, here I am ignoring the delay of this inverter. So, I am assuming C 1 and C 2 are getting activated almost simultaneously 0 to 1 of C 1 and 1 to 0 of C 2 are happening together. So, after that there will be a delay of the flip flop, delay of this flip flop plus delay of the OR gate, delay of the OR gate plus setup time for the next flip flop before the next clock can come. So, before the next clock can come D 2 must be stable for this much time. See after this propagation delay and the delay of this OR this output of D 2 becomes 1 because Q 1 has become 1 after a delay of OR this output of OR also becomes 1 and this has to be kept stable for a minimum amount of T setup T S U okay. only then it will work correctly. So, the condition is your this width of the pulse T w must be equal to maximum of flip flop propagation delay maximum of this logic circuit delay this order I am saying plus setup time all these three things taken together. This is a scenario where I am ignoring the inverted delay if clock is not skewed, but here clock will be skewed. So, what will happen is something like this see because of the clock skew there will be a delay here C 2 will get delayed this will be your skew shown here. So, clock going from 0 to 1 and clock 2 going from 1 to 0 there will be a delay this is equal to T inverter T INV. So, the total T w which was there because of this this is actually getting subtracted because anyway you are 
needing to have some minimum delay, but already the clock is delayed. So, after this delay you can see that this T w everything is getting delayed. So, the first one whenever this clock comes these three delays are coming after that T f f, T or T s u, but the second one starts computing after this inverted delay, because this clock edge comes after this T inf delay. So, actually for the second one the constant will become max t plus is minus minimum of T inverter. Okay. There are two scenarios I am showing here, here uh, this is an OR gate, this is set up time where they are just equal, this is the limiting case. So, when the clock is queued you have to satisfy this condition. Okay. This you have to remember for this kind of a circuit this will be the condition. Next case the reverse where C 1 is delayed. So, let us insert an inverter here and let us assume that whenever there is a positive edge coming on C 1 a negative edge will coming on C 2. So, both will be triggered together same way. So, this is the first scenario if the clock is not skewed T w will be greater than equal to sum of these three in the same way, but if the clock is skewed like this was the previous thing clock is not skewed, but because of the clock skew you see C 1 is getting delayed C 1 is getting delayed. So, now what will happen this D 2. So, whatever is coming C 2 edge that the whatever is coming here it is not getting total T setup time it is getting less D 2 is getting stable here only and it is getting stable for a time which is less than T setup. So, there is an error situation here. Okay. So, this was the error situation and in the limiting case you can have this, this will be your inverter delay this much. So, what is the condition you have to satisfy? This will get added now, because this one is computing first and then you compute this and because this is getting delayed everything is getting delayed. So, until this completes you cannot start this. So, this inverter delay will get added here. So, the idea is that if there are two flip flops one after the other, if you delay the clock of the first one that is a bad situation, your total delay requirement increases. But if you delay the clock of the second one, that inverted delay gets minus negative uh, subtracted. So, you do not have to pay for an additional delay for the clock in that case. Okay. So, these are some delay calculations you can use to actually estimate the clock cycle time and uh, to improve or or optimize on that. Okay. So, these are some simple calculations. Now, to summarize maximum clock frequency calculations whatever we have seen. So, in general we look at it like this. So, I have a flip flop there is a logic network in between general there is another flip flop clocks are C 1 and C 2 first scenario is C 2 is queued after C 1 that means, C 2 is getting delayed. So, the first case that you saw. So, there your clock width time period must be greater than or equal to the propagation delay of the flip flop, the maximum delay of the logic network setup time minus this delay. Suppose, this C 2 is coming after inverter delay. So, I am calling it T in, but if C, uh, but if it is the other way around C 1 is getting delayed then C 2 is coming. So, there is an inverter here in C 1 then your T w is increasing which means your frequency will be decreasing. So, your first case is better your frequency is improving second case is worse your frequency is decreasing. Okay. So, these are some criteria you can use you can follow to optimize on the clock frequency.
Now, there is another simple small example like you have a direct connection like this from the output of one flip flop to the other. It says how much skew between C 1 and C 2 can be tolerated. Suppose C 2 is delayed case 1, C 2 comes after. So, it is something like this C 2 is coming after a delay of T s k right. So, you have this setup time requirement C 1 edge minimum setup time and hold time after that this much and suppose this is your propagation delay before D 2 it reaches propagation delay of this line. So, what happens is that that in the worst case after this delay what happens this was without the delay, but if it is getting delayed then everything is getting shifted to the right okay. C 2 is getting delayed further delay this was little delay the delay is increasing. So, this edge will be touching this edge here this is a limiting case beyond this there will be an error if it is further reduced then the hold time requirement will be violated. Okay. So, you get a condition like this T f f should be greater than T h plus T s k total your propagation delay should be should not be less than the sum of these two and of course, T s k should be propagation delay minus T h should be less than that skew. So, you can check if these two are violated your correct operation will be disturbed and if C 1 is delayed in the other case. So, you have a similar kind of a situation you can similarly make a calculation. Okay. So, I am just leaving it to you these are the scenarios C 1 is getting delayed okay. and additional delay between flip flop how it affects the skew calculation one last example suppose there is a multiplexer in between. So, let us consider a scenario like this skew C 2 is delayed skew is minimum propagation delay time minus hold time total is T f f minus T this is T s k and when you also include the delay of the multiplexer your D 2 will change after that T f f plus T max D 2 will change after that and when it comes to the input of the second flip flop this will be the hold time for C 2 after the C 2 H comes minimum this much time the data must be stable. So, your second condition will be like this time minimum T f f plus multiplexer minus T h T h will get subtracted. So, to summarize for a circuit like this skew these are the two equation this already we have talked about. So, you can use these two equations and one you can check whether these two are getting satisfied if not that means, there is some timing violation there. So, with this uh, we come to the end of this lecture. So, we shall be talking about some more issues about clocking in the next lecture as well. Thank you.